Let's get right into it. Number 10. How microwaves heat food. People love acting like they've got microwaves all figured out. Oh yeah, it's like radio waves that heat stuff up. But ask them how and watch them suddenly remember they left the oven on. Inside every microwave is something called a magnetron. Think of it as a tiny radio station that shoots invisible waves. These waves bounce around inside your microwave like a hyperactive kid in a bouncy castle. When they hit water molecules in your food, they make them dance like they're at a rave. We're talking billions of spins per second. All this molecular dancing creates friction, which creates heat. It's like when you rub your hands together really fast, but on a molecular level. But these waves don't spread evenly. They create hot and cold spots, like invisible bullseyes all through your food. That's why your burrito can be nuclear hot on one end and frozen in the middle. Number 9. Amazon Rainforest Oxygen Production People say, the Amazon produces 20% of Earth's oxygen, like it's some giant green air factory pumping out fresh oxygen for us to breathe. But that's not how it works at all. The Amazon does make oxygen during the day through photosynthesis. But at night, those same plants need oxygen to survive, just like us. It's like having a roommate who stocks the fridge during the day, but raids it at night. Most of Earth's oxygen actually comes from tiny organisms in the ocean called phytoplankton. These microscopic overachievers are the real MVPs of oxygen production. The Amazon's real superpower isn't making oxygen. It's storing carbon. Think of it like Earth's biggest carbon vault. It keeps dangerous stuff locked away. Bring up phytoplankton at your next dinner party and watch the confusion unfold. Because the truth is way less Instagram-worthy than lungs of the Earth. Number 8. Survival of the fittest. This Darwin quote might be the most misunderstood phrase in science. People picture some jacked lion beating up other animals for lunch money, but that's not how it works at all. Being fit just means you're good at not dying in your specific situation. Take the peppered moth, for example. During the Industrial Revolution, white moths started turning black because factory smoke turned all the trees black and white moths stuck out like a sore thumb. Birds could spot them easily and eat them. The darker moths survived better. Or look at bacteria. These tiny things can survive in boiling hot springs or frozen lakes. They're not winning any strength contests, but they're masters at adapting to their environment. Cockroaches outlived the T-Rex for a reason. Sometimes being small, sneaky, and good at hiding is fitter than being big and strong. It's not about being the strongest. It's about being the best at not dying in your particular situation. Number 7. How tides actually work. Tides seem simple enough. The moon pulls the water, right? Actually, it's way more bizarre than anyone admits. The moon doesn't just pull water up on one side of Earth. It creates two bulges, one facing the moon and, weirdly, one on the opposite side. That second bulge exists because of inertia, the water's tendency to keep moving. It's like when you're in a car and it stops suddenly, but your body wants to keep going forward, and the sun gets involved too, playing cosmic tug-of-war with the moon. When they line up, we get super high spring tides. When they're at right angles, we get small wimpy tides. Some places get really weird with it. There are rivers where the incoming tide creates a massive wave that flows upstream. Imagine a natural water park ride, but it's just the tide saying, nah, I'm going this way now. Most people just nod along when you mention the double bulge. Because honestly, why would water bulge away from the thing pulling it? Nobody wants to admit they don't get it. Number six, why soap cleans? You've been using soap your whole life, but do you really know what's happening? Soap molecules are like tiny barbells with split personalities. One end loves water, the other end hates it but loves oil and grease. When these molecules hit water, they form microscopic bubbles called micelles. Think of each micelle like a tiny garbage truck. The grease-loving ends grab onto dirt and germs. The water-loving ends face outward, ready to be washed away. But soap doesn't just move dirt around. It literally rips bacteria apart. Many germs have a fatty outer layer, like a protective jacket. Soap molecules tear these jackets to shreds, killing the germs. The Babylonians figured this out 4,800 years ago. Legend says they discovered it by accident when rain washed animal fat and ash into a river. Imagine being the first person to see mysterious bubbles cleaning things. We use it every day, but micelles? Amphiphilic molecules? Most of us just know bubbles equal clean. Number 5. How airplanes stay in the air. Here's a fun fact. Even aerospace engineers argue about this one. Oh, the wings are curved, so the air moves faster on top, creating lift. Sounds smart until you realize that's only part of the story. Four forces keep a plane in the air. Lift, weight, thrust, and drag. 
Think of them like a cosmic tug-of-war team. Lift and thrust are trying to get the plane up and moving forward. Weight and drag are trying to pull it down and slow it down. The wings are shaped like curved ramps, splitting the air into two streams. When air hits them, some goes over, some goes under. The air going over the top has to travel further, so it speeds up. Fast-moving air has less pressure than slow-moving air. It's like when you stick your hand out a car window. Tilt it up. Air pushes it up. The controls are like a weird orchestra. Ailerons on the wings make the plane roll. Elevators on the tail make it go up or down. And the rudder makes it turn left or right. We can build planes that fly perfectly. We just can't completely agree on why they work so well. Number 4. Why the sky is dark at night. This question messed with scientists' heads for centuries. If space is full of stars in every direction, why isn't the night sky as bright as day? Think about it. If you're in an infinite forest, everywhere you look should hit a tree, right? Same with stars. Every direction should eventually hit a star's light. The whole sky should be lit up. But it's not. And here's the mind-bending reason why. First, the universe isn't infinitely old. It's only about 13.8 billion years old. That means light from superfar stars hasn't had time to reach us yet. It's like if you turned on a flashlight in a huge dark room. The light takes time to reach the walls. If the room is big enough, some walls stay dark. Second, the universe is expanding, stretching the light like cosmic silly putty. By the time this stretched light reaches us, it's changed so much we can't even see it anymore. This simple observation about darkness actually proves the universe had a beginning. Pretty wild for something we take for granted every night. Number 3. Gravity. We all learned about gravity in school. It's what makes stuff fall down, right? Well, turns out it's way weirder than that. Imagine putting a bowling ball on your bed. The mattress curves around it, and marbles would roll toward the dip. That's basically what planets and stars do to space itself. Here's something that'll mess with your head. Gravity actually slows down time. Your feet are aging slightly slower than your head right now, because they're closer to Earth's gravity. Gravity is actually an insanely weak force. A tiny fridge magnet can beat the gravitational pull of the entire Earth. Yet without this wimpy force, the universe would just be random atoms floating nowhere. Even Einstein's famous theory only tells us what gravity does, not what it actually is. Scientists still can't explain how it works with quantum particles. It's like having two perfect recipes that somehow make completely different cakes. Ask someone to explain gravity and watch them stumble. They'll say things fall down or mass attracts mass, but can't tell you why. We use it every day, but have no clue what it actually is. Number 2. How Wi-Fi Actually Works Your router is basically a tiny radio station in your house, but instead of music, it's broadcasting your cat videos and emails. These signals fly through the air as radio waves, bouncing off walls and dodging obstacles. Your microwave can actually mess with these waves. That's right. Your leftover pizza reheating session might be why Netflix keeps buffering. Think of your router like a post office that speaks two languages. 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. 2.4 gigahertz is like shouting. Travels far, but everyone can hear you. 5 gigahertz is like whispering. More private, but doesn't go as far. When too many devices try to talk at once, their signals literally crash into each other midair. That's why your internet slows down when everyone in the neighborhood gets home and hops online. Your router has to play traffic cop, directing billions of invisible messages through this chaos every second. Most people have no idea what Hertz even means. It's just tech gibberish we all pretend to understand. Number 1. Debt and how modern money is created. Ever wonder where money actually comes from? Not the physical cash in your wallet, but all those digital numbers in your bank account. When you take out a loan, the bank doesn't grab cash from some giant vault. They just type some numbers into a computer and boom, new money exists. This is totally legal, and it's how most money is created. About 97% of all money is just numbers in computers, created by banks giving out loans. When you get a mortgage, the bank doesn't check if they have $500,000 sitting around. They just create it digitally and add it to your account. The money literally didn't exist until you signed those papers, and when you pay back a loan, that money basically vanishes. It's like the whole thing never happened. The entire system runs on everyone believing it works. If everyone tried to withdraw their money at once, the whole thing would collapse because most of that money only exists as debt. Most people will confidently explain banking to you like they're financial experts. But the truth is, even economists argue about whether this system makes any sense. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.